Hello everyone, welcome to another quick tutorial from 3G4G. Um, in this video, we will look at some of the basic concepts like bandwidth, latency, uh, throughput and jitter in the mobile networks. Let's start with what bandwidth means uh, in a mobile network. So I tell people uh, to visualize bandwidth as pipes. The wider the bandwidth, the more fatter the pipe. The actual 3GPP term for bandwidth uh, is the channel bandwidth, uh, often uh, written as simply uh, BW. Uh, so channel bandwidth is the RF bandwidth supporting a single RF carrier with the transmission bandwidth configured in the uplink or downlink of a cell. The channel bandwidth is measured in megahertz, uh, uh, hertz equals cycles per second, and it is used as a reference for transmitter and receiver uh, RF requirements. For example, LT supports scalable channel bandwidths from 1.4 megahertz to 20 megahertz. The bandwidth of UMTS channel is 5 megahertz. We also use the term transmission bandwidth which is defined as the bandwidth of an instantaneous transmission from a UE or base station measured in resource blocks units. The transmission bandwidth configuration on the other hand is the highest transmission bandwidth allowed for uplink or downlink in, in a given channel bandwidth measured in resource blocks units. So you may be aware that uh, for the 20 megahertz channel we have 100 resource blocks. Now this would be the transmit, uh, transmission bandwidth configuration. On the other hand, there may be just uh, 40 resource blocks, resource blocks uh, being used at any instant, which would be the transmission bandwidth. In 3GPP release 10, uh, which was the first LT advance release, the concept of carrier aggregation was uh, introduced. Here, you can aggregate up to four additional carriers with the primary carrier. So we have the concept of primary component carrier PCC and secondary component carrier SCC. We can also visualize this as smaller pipes combining uh, to create a fatter pipe. So carrier uh, aggregation introduces new bandwidth definitions. Aggregated channel bandwidth is the RF bandwidth in which a base station transmits and or receives multiple contiguously aggregated carriers. The aggregated channel bandwidth is measured in megahertz. And aggregated uh, transmission bandwidth configuration ATBC on the other hand is the total number of aggregated physical resource blocks. Now latency <clears throat> is generally defined as the time it takes for a source to send a packet of data to a receiver. Now in simple terms, this is half of the ping time uh, and this is also referred to as one way latency. Sometimes the term round trip latency or uh, round trip time RTT is also used to define latency. Uh, this would be the same as the ping time. Jitter is defined as the variation in delay or latency of received packets. It is also referred to as delay jitter. So we may have a, a, a case where the latency is let's say 50 milliseconds and jitter is, uh, is 10 milliseconds. What that means is that the packets can arrive anytime between 50 milliseconds and 60 milliseconds. Jitter is generally caused because of congestion in the networks. Uh, a way to reduce jitter is to use digital buffer in the receiver. So people often ask if there is any relation between bandwidth and latency and uh, there isn't right. So let's look uh, at an example uh, with pipes. So here uh, let's look at pipes A and B. Here a single packet would take the same amount of time to go from 1 to 2 regardless of whether it's the pipe A or pipe B. 
whereas in case of pipe C, even though the distance is the same, it takes longer for the, the packet to reach to point 2. So here the latency is higher. So bandwidth is often referred to as a measure of capacity while latency is a measure of delay. Now here is a speed test example uh, on a same network but at different locations. Uh, you can see that in the second case the download speed is much higher uh, but the ping time is also more. Right? So just to show that there isn't really a relation between uh, latency and bandwidth. So how is latency defined in 3GPP and ITU? So in, in 3GPP and ITU, control plane latency and user plane latency is discussed for a particular technology. So the control plane latency is defined as the transition time from idle state to connected state. The user plane latency, also known as transport delay, is defined as the one-way transit time between a packet being available at the IP layer of the origin and the availability of this packet at IP layer of the destination. So when LTA, LT Advance was being defined back in 2009, the, IM, uh, the IMT Advance requirement was for 100 millisecond control plane latency. Now this is a 3GPP calculation uh, showing the calculated de delay to be 50 millisecond in, in the LTA system. Similarly, uh, IMTA defines the user plane latency to be 10 millisecond. So the 3GPP calculation is showing that it's going to be uh, less than 5 millisecond in case of zero block error rate. Often the term end-to-end -end latency is also used. Now end-to-end -end latency, E2E uh, latency is defined as the time it takes for the uh, it takes to transfer a given piece of information from a source to a destination measured at the communication interface from the moment it is transmitted by the source to the moment it is successfully received at the destination. Now this is the 5G latency requirement slide from a recent presentation by Professor Andy Sutton. Uh, the reference is actually given here. You can uh, look at it uh, from the slides later on. Now here you can see different organizations use different latencies. So NGMN and GSMA uh, define end-to-end -end latency, uh, while ITU defines the user and the control plane latency. I have just added this slide uh, from Mehdi Benis. Uh, the reference is again provided uh, to show the latency and reliability definitions in case of uh, URLLC, Ultra Reliable Low Latency Communications. Now let's look uh, at throughput. So throughput is the actual rate that information is transferred. It is defined as the quantity of data being sent received by unit of time. In mobile networks, the end user throughput is the amount of information received in bits per second. Uh, throughput is measured at layer one or two or even at application layer. In network, often cell throughput is calculated, which is the throughput of all simultaneous users in the cell. So here I just want to look at the network throughput and network capacity that, that are, and they are slightly related. So the network throughput is the sum for all different bands, uh, where for each band you multiply the quantity of spectrum in Hertz with the cell density in cell per kilometer square and multiply this product by the spectral efficiency in bits per second per hertz per cell. So this gives the throughput of the whole network. Sometimes it's more useful to calculate the network capacity 
which is the sum for all different bands of a network where for each band you multiply the quantity of spectrum in hertz cell spectral efficiency in bits per second per hertz and multiply this by the number of cells you different people use a uh, different uh, uh, whether network throughput or network capacity it depends on what you are trying to show so finally let's also look at the packet loss and packet error rate packet loss reflects the number of packets lost per 100 of packets sent by the host packet error rate defines an upper bound for a rate of non congestion related packet losses right so you have you can have congestion related packet losses you can have non congestion related packet losses so packet error rate is for non congestion related packet losses so the purpose of uh, packet error rate is to allow for appropriate link layer protocol configurations example rlc and uh, hybrid arq in ran of a 3gpp access So this is a, an interesting graph which shows an example of how latency and packet loss impact LTE. So you can see that the y axis is the throughput, uh, the x axis is the, the latency, right? And it's for this calculation is for different packet losses. So depending on the color, you can see like, you know, the more packet loss, the less the throughput as you would expect. And if it's more if there is higher latency. So finally, uh, this is a table uh, for 5G UR LLC performance requirements. As you probably know that LLC in UR LLC stands for low latency communications. I think it's useful to know end to end latency requirements and jitter for different scenarios. So you can see the first uh, three columns, right? Uh, so when it says something like, let's say uh, electricity distribution, medium voltage, the end to end latency requirements is 25 millisecond and the jitter uh, is also 25 millisecond so that means the packets can arrive anytime between 25 millisecond and 50 millisecond okay and on the other hand uh, if it's something like discrete automation the first row discrete automation uh, motion control so here the end-to-end -end latency is just one millisecond with a jitter of one microsecond so very very strict requirements here So as usual, I hope you like this short video on latency bandwidth, etc. Uh, as always, please leave any comments, suggestions or any feedback. Uh, and I hope to bring another video to you sometime soon. Thank you.